Hello, everyone. How you all doing this fine Sunday? Tails, hello. Can put hello in the chat if you want. Hi. <clears throat> Hi, Ani. How's it going? How are you doing? Been a while, huh? Um. Okay. So, Daria. Yay. Daria is here. We can start. Daya Lu. Daya Lu. Vitor, hi. Oziris. Honey. So nice to see you. Yay. Nice to see you too. It's been a long time. Hi, everyone. Yay. So, I'm Leticia Gillard for those are new. This is the archetype channel. So we choose one from the 12 archetypes from Carl Jung. Jung. And um, this stream is sponsored by Lenovo. Thank you, Lenovo. Happy Sunday. Hey, Athena. Yay. Yeah, the whole family here. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been putting off a lot of the working on the main character for this piece and i think today we're gonna have to we're gonna have to do it it's over no more proc proc procrastinating <laughs> how much for kubo figure man you should go to the there is a website there's a kubo figure over there you see this one um there is a website called Leica Shop, Shop Leica, something like that. And um, it's official from Leica. And you can buy it. They have Kubo and they have Coraline. But when I ordered, they only they didn't have any Coraline um, available. So I only got Kubo, but I'm, I'm planning to get Coraline as well. It's very cool. All right. So let's start. Um, let's start yeah it's pretty cool no worry all right let me share my screen <clears throat> okay Let's see the side all right can you all see my screen i think you can hi i'm good how are you all doing we're gonna try to finish this girl and then finishing her we're gonna have pretty much everything and next week we can do some texture not next week sorry the next time we meet we're gonna be doing some texturing and lighting on it in marmoset and substance painter so i've been postponing to finish this not sure why but that's normal right sometimes um you start avoiding certain things and it's important to start thinking why you know and i think for me a lot of it is that um sometimes it's because i didn't do the proper research like maybe i need to research some things that i feel more comfortable or confident about how i want to do her costume design you know since we're designing live also that that is not you know as easy to do but i think um after thinking about it yesterday i was like why do i keep avoiding doing um this character and i think it's because i don't want to solve the costume design so today we're gonna push it through it together because the only way to it is through it so the only way you gotta try it and you gotta do your best and you can't just give up right so with life we gotta keep trying Hello, um, T. Waltz, please, if any advisor could answer to my email, I'd really appreciate for Nomen. Okay, um, yeah, they are, uh, I can't speak to, from them, to them, yeah, but I hope they answer you, <laughs> hopefully, uh, sooner. Um, all right, so let's start seeing what do we need to do to you know get the groove back on this girl here which i'm not feeling much but like i said we gotta keep trying all right so 
One thing I think is going to help is to really make her pop from the other characters. And a reminder, the other character is this guy. This guy. So I'm going to put him here on the side just so we can kind of have a reference. And then let's go back to a girl. I think what Bjork did here um, with like some face painting stuff, some makeup and such. So maybe we have to research some uh, face painting. Face painting. Okay, so we can try to find some something interesting. We gotta remember that she did herself, and so nothing professional. It needs to look kind of like handmade and, and expressive at the same time. Uh -huh. Let's see. Is there anything cool that we can use? If you guys have any um, ideas? Let me know too. I like the idea of like, um, maybe it's like a few colors on the face like this. We have blue and then on the eyes, there's like some cyan and then there's some yellow. Just like rows of colors. That could be cool. Think of something else. Mm -hmm. Hey, Lula. Tudo bem? <laughs> Saudade de tu. All right. Yeah, I think I'm going to do just like some rolls of color. Nothing too crazy. So if we think about what we have here with Bjork, you see, it's a, it's a bit more defined and stuff, but um, let's test it out. That's the best way to do it, right? So let's test it. I'm going to isolate here. Gonna hide her hair for now. Kind of see her face like this. And then let's try some stuff. So I was thinking about the colors from the Beatles um, from this. So we can try some green and blue and red and pink, maybe. Pink. Let's try it. And again, it's not supposed to feel like. Someone helped her. I guess he has some cheek. Yay, glad. Feliz que está tudo bem, Will. And then we can get a brush. Maybe we can make a new brush. Let's make a new brush with some feeling to it. So I'm going to get a standard brush and then I'm going to get a maybe a color spray now. Free hand. And then on the alpha, we can get something with a little extra vibe. Let's see how it goes. I'm going to turn off symmetry. Ooh, that's not what I wanted. On RGB. It's not the kind of texture I'm looking for. Let's see something. Oh, yeah. This is kind of cool. It's going to create some, you know healing to it so we can put like let's try it we can put pink this and then we can get some of that green yellowish green do something like this and then on this area we can put the blue that blue a bit lighter Okay. What do you all think? <laughs> okay, it's not the greatest, it's not bad. I'm gonna keep it for a while just to see how we feel. Definitely gonna make her pop comparing to the kid, you know, which is what we want. I think I'm going to spread, now that I put the fringe on, I'm going to spread a little more of that pink on the yellow here. Yeah. 
And then we can give a little bit of a, of a dark color. Let me get a little alpha here. We can get some black to put around the eyes a little. Like some eyeliners, something. We can do like a this. I'll step here. Make her eyes pop, you know, her eyes are like getting too dim. So maybe we can try to make it pop a bit. Just some black. Mm, not sure about that handle there. And go back. I'm gonna keep it like this for now. We can think about it. Maybe we can bring it up a bit. This is it's gonna work. And not the greatest, but go there. You gotta push it through it. Remember that the only way to it is through it. So even when we're not feeling, we gotta try to push it, try to experiment with stuff. Eventually, we'll get there. You trust yourself, you'll get there. All right, so now we have this. I like the face paint. We can think about something to put on her lips at some moment. But for now, uh, let's give her some tea. I think that would be a good idea. So I have those little teeth I made for the boy right here. So I'm just going to keep her up. Propagating. How do I step in gaming industry without finance? Mm, not sure. What do you mean with that? Without like to to get to a school to study gaming? Is that what you mean? All right. So I'm gonna keep it like this. Oh yeah, we had the idea that she's missing a tooth. So we can we can take one later. I'm gonna propagate and then we can take one later. I'm gonna take this, then we can just hold control. Gonna make a duplication here. So we can take that. Normally the the tooth next to it, it's a bit smaller, narrow. So I'm gonna make it a little narrow like so. Put it here. And then we're going to hold control again, duplicate. And this is the, um, you know, can I? So we can make it a bit taller overall, and then we can do a little tip on it, not tip up, a little sharpness on it. Cool. Let's see how it's feeling. Ooh, that's too much. Too much height. Just a little bit. Also, I'll probably make the front tooth much bigger. I think we're not pushing hard enough, so I'm just gonna make sure this is much bigger like this. I'm gonna do one side smarter <laughs> than do all at once. Auto group. Delete this guy's here. Delete this guy. Now let's organize it here. So I want this front tooth to be much bigger. Fabiano, thank you. Thank you. And then uh, we can give a little bit of that, um, you know, 
from the canine, just a little bit of more of that downstream. Just, you don't need to do anything crazy again. It's just a little bit. Any help? I can't afford to go out of the country. I don't have enough finance. And there's nothing in my country regarding game industry. So how do I approach outside companies as a fresher, if you know companies? Yeah, I see what you mean now. Um, my suggestion is um, the world is very global now, meaning like um, a lot of companies are hiring outside, um, people from outside the country. Um, so I would try to work, if it was me, I would try to work in your country, but for companies that are, that are outside. So like try to do freelance work for companies here or in Europe or whatever it is. And then when you start getting that, that uh, clientele, let's say, you know, you're gonna start building, building your resume and that's going to be very helpful for you to be able to apply to companies and they're going to pay for your uh, visa. You know? Because without the experience, it's very hard they're going to uh, pay for your visa. So my suggestion would be um, start working from your country again and looking for companies outside that you can start connecting with so you can be, build that resume. Then with that, the companies are going to be more inclined to um, pay for your visa so you can leave, you know, you can go to their country to work. I think that will be my, my main suggestion. All right, let's mirror this. So I'm going to hide this too, and then I'm going to say mirror. And now let me a bit here. <laughs> maybe not the front tooth. Maybe she's gonna be missing this tooth. So let me go back. Uh, that's kind of funny though. This is actually very funny. I think I dig it. I think I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> what do you guys think? Too much, or should we keep it this way? Anyone has any opinion? So cute that way. Okay, okay. Someone liked it, so I think I'm gonna keep it. I like it too, but I don't know if it was too much. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so let's put some back tea. Um, what I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna merge them. Okay, let me merge down. Oh, it's this inverted. Ah, Z brush. So here, I'm going to do a little flip. Split properties. All right. So now we can um, turn on symmetry, and then I'm going to duplicate this. But then the back tooth, they're better, right? So I'm just gonna make this a little fatter like this. And then we can just reshape a little. Like this, again, don't need this tip. They're normally also shorter overall. We need gums too. We're gonna put gums. Okay. Shorter. And better. Just a switch. It's very stylized, so we don't need to worry too much about it. Just gonna make sure it's fitting well. So we're gonna make this, and we could even do one more. I don't know if it's gonna be seen, but do it for now. 
Then we can pop some some tooth back there. We gotta see how we're gonna pose her, and then we're gonna do it. And let's give it some gum because that's weird. So I'm gonna use that cylinder that I used to make the the piece of her first, and then we can do some gum. The way I like to do gum, and this has way too much uh, subdivisions, but let me delete some. The way I like to do gum is very easy. I just take like a cylinder with no subdivisions. So I'm just deleting here stuff. Okay. And then we're going to delete like most of the center stuff here. Oops. What's it not? Oh yeah, we can also select the rolls like this. Whoop. We have this, and then we can just delete the back. So, just delete all this back, back stuff here. And now we have our gun. With that done, we can come here to the dynamics of bins, and then we can add thickness in, inwards. And uh, we can turn off, and then you have some gum, see? Gum feeling. Not too bad. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. So let me just double check what they did on um, turning red. I don't know how, if we see much gum at all. It doesn't seem like it. See a lot of teeth. So I'll keep the gum, but I'm not going to show much of it, I guess. I think I like it, the idea of not seeing gum. The, cool th the cool thing about gum is that it, it does make the tooth smaller, which does make them look younger. <laughs> but this is way too much, yeah. <laughs> if I uh, put some gum color here, some healthy gum like this. <laughs> I'm in love with this gum. Oh, look at that. Poor thing. No, I'm not going to do that to her. So we can um, smooth it up and have it somewhere. But we don't need to see it, I guess. All right. So let me hide the body. And just make sure that this gum is long enough. Okay. We can also like do some shaping on the gum. Again, I don't think the gum is gonna be seen. So but just just so I can show you all how I normally do. I don't overthink too much. So I just try to like do a little bit of a shape. Like so. And that's about it. So if you look at it, there's a little shape there for the tooth. And that's about it. But change my mind, keep the gap and the big gums. <laughs> yeah. Free runner said, question, there's a chance in your op option for a truly great portfolio made almost entirely personal work of getting attention and to be truly evaluated by a hiring de department. In other words, I know that professional works attract professional works, but there's a chance to break into the industry purely personal stuff. Um, I think so. I'm a true big believer on personal work. You know, I think personal work shows you who you are, what you like to do, uh, shows you as an art director because you're having to make decisions all by yourself. So I think personal work is very, very powerful. What could happen sometimes is that personal work might not take you all the way through. Uh, well, it might take you all the way through if you like starting an industry in like a, a lower position. But the thing about having professional work is not so much to like, 
oh, professional work is incredible, but it also shows that you already know the industry, not know the industry, but like you already have those social skills at a work environment, you know, that is so important. Like you, if you worked in another studio, it shows that you um, have good communication skills or decent communication skills to be able to work in a production with other people. And that stuff is stuff that a recruiter is thinking as well. He's not just thinking, is this artist amazing? No, he's thinking, is this artist going to fit with the team? Are they going to take well notes? Are they going to know how to communicate? And for most companies, the way to know that is to know if you ever worked somewhere before. You know what I mean? Um, so I think, yes, personal work is very, very powerful. And I will keep doing it and keep doing it. But also, uh, your professional work is going to answer those questions to the recruiter as well. So it's kind of like a combo. Sometimes you don't even need to have amazing professional work at all. But just the fact that you had the opportunity to work in a company, it's going to tell the recruiter that you you have those skills. You know what I mean? I hope that that's clear. Yeah, thank you, Free Runner. Free Runner said, "Thank you for the reply." By the way, Lily said, "Love your work. Your art station is truly a thing of beauty." Yay. Yeah, you can see on my art station that I really, really, for me, personal work is very important. You know, so um, I take very seriously, um, and I think, in my opinion, with my experience, again, this is just my experience. I think my personal work really helps me get where I where I want, and and that's why I keep doing it. You know, it keeps me like sharpening my skills. It, you know, and I'm not only dependent on my professional work to get work. All right. So if not for gaming industry, but as a 3D artist, I can work for other companies in my country. Yes. Um, there are many, many companies, not, not the big ones, but there are many uh, medium to small companies that are hiring people all over the world to, to do work, you know. So if it was me, I'll probably jump on that and, uh, and try to get those first jobs and, and, and get the experience, you know. That's just my opinion, obviously, but yeah, I think I would do that. All right, that's our girl. I think I'm gonna keep it like that. Uh, for the tongue, I just need to make it higher a little. Make it turn a bit. Um, one thing also I was thinking upon her is just actually try to push it even more, make her a bit chubbier. Yeah, some bigger companies, they. I mean, Netflix does it, you know, Netflix hires people from all over the world and, and they can stay at their at their country. No worries. Uh, some other companies, they don't do that as much. So uh, I would say it's, it's more like um, medium to small size companies are doing that a lot. But like I said, Netflix does it. And Netflix is a big company. So. Um, more and more this is happening, you know. Um, um, more and more companies are, are doing more more stuff like that. So pure eyes peeled. All right, I made her a little sicker. Wait a bit more. So again, trying to contrast from the, the little boy here. Okay. Maybe we need one good reference is the the girl from Turning Red, this one. So we can see like a little less anatomy, maybe just 
very round. It's very round. So I'm gonna try to do that. Keep it everything more round. Yep. All right. Cool. I think now let's um let's think about her clothing. And we gotta revisit this piece to just kind of like rotate some of them and make the overlap feel a bit better. I don't know if I could be explored, but we could consider a partially growing permanent tooth instead of a full missing tooth. Oh, yeah, I like that idea. Let's try that. I really like that idea. Let's try it. I'm going to. Uh, I'm gonna duplicate this and delete key then. And then this one I'm going here. And then we can just Oh, that's not bad. It's less extreme for sure, so I like it. <laughs> Uh, that, that was a great idea. Let's keep it that way. <laughs> I think the other way was too extreme, to be honest. So, keep it like that. Also, I don't like that I added some anatomy to this tongue. I'm going to take it off. I want it soft and chunky. Yeah, that was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Get some water. Okay. So now let's see what we can do here. Let's think about this. Let's think about this. Let's think about this. I already forgot what I was thinking about doing. So let's see. I'm not gonna do the fringe thing anymore. I think it's too much, but Let's see. Maybe she can put like a little belt thingy. Uh, maybe also she's now, she doesn't have the pins underneath. She's wearing more as a dress. Let me see without pins. Uh, I texture my stuff normally in Substance Painter. Yeah, if I do some, if it's a quick texturing, I do straight in ZBrush. But if I want to add like, you know, normal maps and things like that to create more details, I normally tend to do it in Substance Painter. Yeah. There's small things sometimes I do in Marmoset as well. Because Marmoset has a painter in it as well. All right, so I'm gonna put no, oops. I'm gonna put no pants. Just gonna be wearing like a dress. And then let's chop it off some of the, the length here of this bit. So let's see how much we wanna go. And a good way to do that, easy way to do that, is just select a roll like so. And then we can go up doop, 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 and see where it gets a nice feeling. Yeah, I like that idea. Maybe the jeans are a bit more stressed, ripped out, yeah. Some colorful pom-poms added to the dress, bottom of sleeve ends. Yeah, I thought maybe she would be no sleeves. And then we can give her like some, maybe like some um, braces or like some little thingies or, her, you know. What do you guys think? Like those leaves very short like this. You think it's cool? He's thinking what a kid can use to dye their outfit. Yeah, I like that. 
I'm going to keep, let's see, I'm going to keep the sleeves up to here. And maybe we can, like, make one longer than the other because she cut by hand. So they're not going to be, like, exact same length. So they're going to be cut. Yeah, bracelets, I think, could be cool. Flowers, I like that idea. All right, so I'm going to delete um, the sleeves here. And maybe what else she can do on her dress? Let's think about this. Maybe we, should we put like a, a little um, belt thingy or like a string and then the dress opens more a little, oops, opens more a little more because of the string. I don't want to complicate too much because it might be hard to read. So maybe she can make the dress shorter and more like flower-like. Let's see shorter just to get the feeling of it. Okay. What if it was shorter? <laughs> no, she's she's a rebel free runner. She is a rebel, so she's gonna be different from the other kids. Maybe her dress, she cuts shorter. So I'm gonna delete this. And then we can do some sort of like a flower, flower shape like this. More. She cut this, this one. This. We can pull this down a bit more. Yeah, we can do some painting experimentation here, even before going to Substance Painter, just so we can get a feeling of, of her. Something like that. And then on the sleeves, we can make maybe one sleeve a little longer than the other. This one got a bit shorter. She cut it in. It's looking funny. Okay. Right. Um, Think about colors. So for her little paddle things, we could go not so crazy because we put some face paint on her. So maybe this paddle stuff can be simpler color. But I definitely need to kind of like move them around to sort of like not make so perfect, you know? So I'm gonna move some around. And and the easy thing is just to give a little, some clicks. You, you go around giving some clicks and then you just move a little bit, some here and there, and it already creates that kind of like handmade feel. You don't need to do too much to get that feeling. So I'm just giving some clicks here and there. Might need to move all these guys up like this. Fit better. You see how already it's feeling like she, she did it by hand? So this little movement, like last week we did the environment. And you guys saw how important it is to just do a few clicks on stuff. And then you get kind of like that more handmade feel to things. That is what I'm doing here. I thought those little feathers, she's giving me Brazilian carnival vibes with the face paint. Yay. Yep. She's Latina. She could be from Brazil. Just going around again, doing some clickies, clickies here. 
going back. I don't know if the back's gonna matter. Well, let's just do a few things. We can do full sleeves, but half part of her sleeves are sweater, bulky like her. But yeah, we could give her a jacket. That could be cool. On put on top. Okay. Feel me here. I think this is starting to feel a little more organic. And so maybe we can do rows of color, like a, a gradient from, I don't know. We're gonna have to pick a color palette from something and stick with it, or else it's gonna become pretty crazy pretty fast. Uh, I think we're gonna stick with this color palette. So since we use those three colors here, we can use the red, orangey red one for for this bit. So let me get a little more orangey red to it. Something more like. This maybe. Hello. Yeah, I, I, we need something here to break. Obviously, the dress is not gonna be this color. Let's check a blue for now, so we can see. Or maybe yellow. Yellow is gonna be better because. This boy has blue. Let's try to avoid anything that is on this kid. So it's very different. So let's put like a yellow color. Ooh, that's interesting. Uh -uh. Or maybe this green here. Let's go a bit more greeny. Oh yeah, <laughs> that might be better. More neon. We're gonna have to figure it out again, like how we're gonna paint this. I know a lot of like hippie stuff has the dye paint, you know, on it. Try to think of, uh, or maybe we can go with the very nice pattern on it that she painted. So, kind of something like that. I do have dual monitor. Um, I I normally like to put everything that I'm working in one monitor because uh, I believe that like, let me do a little drawing here just to show you all my belief. Okay, so imagine this, okay? Um, here's my head, here's my nose, right? Eyes here and if I use one monitor here, one monitor here, let's say, right, to work. So let's say my reference is here and my work is here. What happens is your eye is gonna be focusing here and then you're gonna have to rotate, rotate your head. And normally that movement of rotating your head this way to look at your reference and then rotate it back to do your work, there's a, in my opinion, there is a loss of information, right? On that movement of the head, of comparison of things. The other idea is well, what I do is, what I do is I have one big monitor here. So imagine right now I have you got, what you guys are seeing is I have my work here, I have my reference here, and I have the chat here. That's what you guys are seeing, right? So what happens here is instead of doing all this rotation here, all this degree of rotation, you see this whole degree? What I, my, my eyes is doing is this, right? And then this, looking at the reference. It's very quick. I don't need to turn my head much. I just need to really move my eyes. And my belief is because I'm doing that, I am losing less information. 
I'm losing less. This one, I lose more information. This one, I lose less. That is with my experience working. So what I normally do, I have one big monitor, like I said, with everything. And I have one, one extra monitor here on my side. But this one has nothing important. Sometimes like my email, if I need to check email or something. But this one could be turned off at any point, And I'll have everything I need here in the center. <laughs> that's my mess. <laughs> I hope that's clear. <laughs> Gabriela, Gabriela said, my dreams to have class with you. Oh my God, <laughs> don't say that. Um, you know, I don't know where, well, you're speaking in Portuguese, so I'm assuming in Brazil, but you know, I teach with, um, with a revolution school, De La Hebe. And uh, we're going to do a, a class pretty soon in Portuguese, though, only for Portuguese people, not the people who speak Portuguese. So um, stay tuned. You should, if you're interested, really, uh, I would say contact uh, Revolution School and say that you're interested to be on the, on the waiting list because there's a waiting list already. So I'll be careful on that. Who? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna make her a little chubbier than the other the other ones. Now a lot of people all over the world they're launching this third and second monitor out to the window. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel okay. So another thing, free runner, you said something very important here. Okay, I work with the big monitor. Great. I have one extra monitor, like I said, for like less important things that it's not changing my work. But one thing I also do a lot is turn off that monitor when I'm really trying to focus on my work. Because that is very important. Do not have them Netflix. I love Netflix, trust me, but do not keep Netflix or Instagram, or whatever social media you like on all the time, that is going to split your attention span. Your attention is going to get split, and you're not going to give 100% of your dedication to your, what you're doing right now. And that's very dangerous, because what happens sometimes, people are like, oh, I stayed five hours studying, and... Um, I didn't get much anywhere, yada, yada. Yeah, because you are not actually studying properly. You know what I mean? It's like you have to be fully committed to what you're doing. That's the best way to learn. That's the best way to, to learn fast. There's no other way, guys. So you got to turn off them social media and podcasts and Instagram. And whatever else that you guys watch, you have to commit to stop all that stuff and study, please, okay? You're gonna see that if you do that, trust me, you're going to evolve much faster. I know because I did that myself. I used to be someone that watched stuff while studying and working and producing. And then I stopped doing that and I evolved much faster, okay? Because your brain, there's so much your brain is gonna, uh, like right now I'm talking to you guys and doing stuff. So I'm not giving 100% of my attention to this project at all. That's actually not good at all, okay? But that's the nature of this job, right? But if you don't have to do that, Please do not, trust me, you're going to evolve so much more your craft and you're going to be unstoppable because all these people these days, they cannot study for the, for the sake of themselves without having something on. And that is distraction for the brain, okay? All right. Let me think of something here. What could he sh she have on her foot? 
Yeah, maybe she can have some chunky shoes. Like everyone's gonna be wearing this brown kind of like boring shoe. Maybe she has like some white sneakers, like um, like this, which is very chunky and different, you know. So chunk it up. This I'm gonna have to mop up proper sneakers, but for now, just for a placeholder, I'm gonna make this a bit chunkier. Again, um, if there's anything you guys learned from me so far, is that we need to create contrast, right? So water would contrast very well with the, the fire kid's shoes, you know, the very boring brown kind of dead shoes. And then here, I'm trying to create a bit more cool vibe. I broke something here by mistake, so I'm just gonna fix it. Okay, it's fixed enough. Just so we can get the feeling. All right. Uh, I was going to put some stuff, some like wires coming out of her hair, kind of like what Bjork did here on her face. But I thought it would be cool if it was like coming out of the bun on the hair. Yeah, chill mu music, it's fine. I'm not saying like you can have, like, I think music without lyrics. Again, this is just my own experimentation with myself. When I'm when I have music like soundtracks and things like that, it doesn't have much lyrics. It works better for me. Or like classical music, it's nice. Uh, piano music, it's very cool too. I do that all the time. Um, but I do not put music with lyrics because I I kind of get too much into it, <laughs> and then I I kind of start vibing too much, you know. <laughs> Again, this is just my experience, right? You do what you think is best, but yeah, my experience is no lyrics in my case. <laughs> All right, so let's go to the buns, and I'm gonna get a clay a brush, a perf tube brush, tube. And we're gonna make some shapes, some interesting shapes, like what Bjork did here. So, but I'm only gonna make it coming out of the bun, not coming out of her face. So maybe we can make one, gotta be careful though. On the top here, maybe it looks more in like this. That look like horns, that's cool. Maybe just coming down. Make some coming down. Um, for this, because this is an illustration with us, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep the zero measure because this is just for this is an illustration, right? So I'm not doing this for um, animation. I'm just doing for one thing, which is an illustration. So I'm not going to have to do retouple. You know, whatever I have is enough to pose it. You know, again, like the my my zero measure is pretty decent to do a quick pose. You see, so I don't need to retouple anything. And also, 
okay, this is important what I'm going to say. I don't need to read Topo because being very honest to you guys, also, I already have a job and I'm doing this for fun, right? Uh, do not listen to me if you're trying to make projects so you can uh, add to your portfolio to get hired because if you're trying to get it to get hired, you probably want to show your topology. So you probably want to read Topo even if you're doing an illustration, okay? This for me, it's for fun, right? I'm not looking for a job. So, and I also already have in my portfolio stuff that I did read Topo. So I don't need all my projects to have topology. So because I already have projects that has read Topo on it, you can just have fun now because the topology of the projects that I already did, it's good for me. It shows what I know. And I know I can get a job out of that. Again, if that's no, not your case, you should probably do Retopo. So you can have a new portfolio and you can um, show recruiters and, and, and artists that you know how to do topology. You do not have to have topology for every single project you do. But if you have two projects that you show very strong topology, they will know that you know, you know what I mean? That is what I've learned so far. That's my experience, so. Uh, so Freebrunner said, so basically you have the best job in the world without the topo. <laughs> yes, for this project here, because I already had a job, I'm not looking for a, a new job. And I, like I said, I already have projects with topology done that I want. I don't need to worry too much about that. But if you guys don't have yet projects that you feel strong about your topology, you should take advantage of a personal project and do good topology on it. You know, that would be very good for you. Love retopo challenges, making things game res. Oh yeah, game res topology is so fun. I love that too. I'm with you. I love solving. It's like a puzzle. I love solving like how can I optimize this topology as much as possible, right? I love that 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 part too. So and the UVs, like solving UV puzzle. I love that too. Um so yeah, I'm with you, Alina. So now I'm going to put those little balls on the end. Let's put it in another way. If you read Topo a lot, you will allow to have Netflix on the second monitor. <laughs> My rule is I never allow to have Netflix if I'm working, to be very honest. There's no moment that you are allowed to have Netflix if you're working. But that's just me, okay? That's just me. There's no Netflix if you're working, okay? Netflix is only for after work hours. Again, this is just me. <laughs> That's what I learned with my with my experience. Okay. Take it or leave it. <laughs> Oops. That eat. Netflix is never going to be in my monitor if I'm working, trust me, because I get too into it, and then my attention span to my work is like 20%, and then at that point, it's better not even to do it, in my opinion. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. Uh, this is going to be great. Right. She has some stuff in her hair. That's good. Oh, Lord. All right.
I really love posting links. Um, Netflix looks cute. Yes, Logan. Oh my God, Logan. I'm going to use this. Can I use this? Do you give me uh, the rights to use this when I talk about it? Please, let me say that. I loved what you just said. Netflix so skills. Yes, friend. That's exactly what it is. I'm going to use it and I'm going to say, my friend Logan said once, Netflix so skills. And I'm gonna use it. I gotta actually let me take note on it. I just loved it. Yes. All right. Now I'll never forget. <laughs> uh yeah, you can put um links here for your runner. It's uh if it is, you know related to what we're doing and things like that. That should be fine. Oh, let me see. Oh, yes, 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 yes. For the dress. Oh, that's great for runners. For the dress, yeah, we can do something where I should just splash a bunch of ink stuff, like some paint, and then it becomes this, this kind of mess here. I love that. I'm going to put that here on our reference. Okay, yes, thank you. That's pretty cool. Let's try to do something. Yeah, let's try to paint the dress a little bit and see what happens. So the paint, let's think about how this works. The paint, I'm just thinking of what kind of brush I should try to use. Some blobs of color, yeah, I loved it. I think I'm gonna keep the blue, since the dress is all like that, I'm gonna keep the pink and blue to do some splashes as well, but it doesn't need to be exactly the same shade. So let's see what we can do. Okay. We can get, okay, so let's try an alpha, mm -mm, some splatter alpha. Turn up this the way I want to do it. Mm, no, might need to be a bit more like like something like this, and then we start adding the blue ones. Oh yeah, we could stain we could stain her hand her hands as well. I like that idea, like because she just did maybe this morning or something, you know. I'm gonna put around and we'll see how it feels. You know those dye shirts? When people do dye shirts and stuff. You get the blue here. Might need to do like smaller bits here and there going around. Again, like all of this color stuff we can change when we go to substance brainer. So I'm not too concerned like if we're choosing the proper color. Just want to get an idea of what it what is fun, you know. So uh, maybe like one sleeve is all blue, like this. She painted, and then uh, and then in substance painter we can we can play around better with it. Just thinking about ideas, basically. That's that's the thing about concepting three D. You gotta kind of lose the fear of like going through a lot of changes later right so what i'm trying here is concept but again like i gotta keep in mind that i might change this later it's totally fine we're just trying to figure it out you know what we're doing yay <laughs> i'm glad you like it so we're just trying here i can big a big brush and maybe do like a a big blue splash some area like this, so like in the corner of the dress, and then we can get pink and try to do like make a splash on the pink side like this. Maybe one one sleeve is blue, she painted blue, and the other one's gonna be a bit more pink. This 
And now we can go around and do like smaller, like, tiniest splashes of like, again, always think about big, medium, small. So right now the big is what the yellow, right? And then the medium right now, I have a lot of medium, which are like the pink and blue. And now I'm gonna go with the very tiny brush and then do some small details, you know? And that creates visual interest when you're able to add these three layers, you know? And I'm gonna be honest, one thing I struggle with is with the small details. Sometimes I, I focus too much on big and medium, but I do not add the small stuff, you know? And um, so I gotta always rem remind myself that tertiary details also exist, you know, and they're very, very important. So I'm just gonna go around adding the small, small bits around. What her backstory? I missed that stream. Oh, that's a great question, Alina. Um, so she's part of this choir and they're singing Imagine from the Beatles. Okay. And everyone's supposed to be wearing the same clothes, you know, and like look like little angels. But this is too boring, you know. She's like, I'm singing Imagine. Imagine is such an amazing, beautiful song. So she wants to express herself. So she's a rebel, but not in a bad way, rebel. She's a good way, rebel, meaning she really wants people to feel the song, feel the vibe of the music, you know. And her way is to express through her clothes, and we're gonna do some posing on her as well. And and but she she's not supposed to do that. So she's just gonna appear at the day of the event, dressed all like this. And the teacher's like, oh my god, just go in, just go, just go. And then she's like gonna be rocking the song instead of singing, like, you know. Because Imagine is such a, like, expressive, lively song, you know? And, and they're killing the song, in her opinion. So she's being a revolutionary, let's call it, you know? So that's kind of, like, why she's so rebel, you know? Is that clear? Is that fun at all? Um, let's see, if we put colors on her front and back, we infer she created carefully the dress, still dye, but well done. We could also do the front part of the dress, inferring that she's in a rush and try a ready dress to improvise a look. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah that's her story, you know, she's like, She's just really singing from the heart and she wants people to feel the message. And the message is such a beautiful, happy message. And the, the teacher just made like boring, you know, and like, uh. so she's like, she's not having it. But she's going to express herself to make the song alive, basically, through her body. <laughs> yep. Right, I think for now, this is fine. Hey, Peter. Hi. <laughs> I don't know about this thing. I'm not feeling it. I'm going to be very honest. I'm not feeling this thing that I did here. It might need to be blue, but I don't want it to be blue like the kids. So maybe it's a very much more rich blue and then yeah maybe a much more rich blue so she's still kind of you know similar to them a little bit but their blue is like such a baby blue let me put him here next to her let's get this blue and make even more baby baby like it's too much Little, make like a baby blue. And then he's going to be here on the side. And she's going to be like a much more intense blue. It's good to save also, right? Once in a while. 
I think we need to make this blue even more saturated, maybe. What do you guys, I, I think the blue is working better, don't you think? Maybe the baby blue can be on the underneath piece, and then she just put those little things on top. Like this. I think she needs to be a little chubbier still. A bit more chubs on it. Just using inflate, and then I can fix the anatomy later. But just again, like we're constantly, so it's good to just get the feeling first, then I can fix it later. This may be those things are colored render me like, oh, by roll. Yeah, we could do it by roll. I'm just thinking if it's too much because her dress has so much color already that I feel like this piece somehow it has complexity because of the leafy things, but maybe it needs to be a bit more subdued. Maybe kind of thing. Maybe it can be the red color on it. Oops, not the girl. Yeah, maybe let's let's say this red. It's gonna be like the tones, like the details. We're gonna put that red in, and then the other colors are on the dress. Not hundred percent sold on the face paint, but. For her age, it might be fine. We might need to add some stuff on her lips. Yeah, I'm not sure. And then her, um, should, we, should we give socks to her? You guys think like she would put some socks with her shoes? I always put socks with. Um, I don't know if she would. Let's think about this. Maybe her socks could, again, like maybe the red color, it's like the color we want for her to be like her accent stuff that she uses. So maybe she's gonna be wearing like some red, uh, what's the name, uh, socks. Let's try something. I'm going to get the topology here and right up to here. So what I'm gonna do is like this and then keep extending. And then, be up until here, so well, maybe a bit more. And then I'm going to duplicate this, delete hidden, pull this one back. And then on this one, I'm going to put the red color and I'm going to add some dynamic subdivision, give some thickness. Let's see what's up. Again, just for now to experiment, see what we think. What are we feeling? Yay or me? I don't know yet. Let me add some more thickness to the thoughts here. The socks might be like really nice. You can do some rolls on socks as well. 
just trying to see if he, we feel like it works. So, no. Suck someone. I don't hate it. So. Be contrasting with them. She could be wearing also on the foot instead of those black, uh, the, those white shoes like this. She could be wearing some like, uh, what's the name of the shoes there? Have the star in it? Converse, I think. Is that the name? Well, I kind of like this ch chunky shoes. Let's keep it chunky. I just need to make it more chunky, I think. You. Again, I'm, this is just the blocking. We're going to have to model, right? Chunky shoe. All stars, yeah. All stars is the one with the star, right? Converse is similar. So. Yeah. Yeah, North Star, All Star, that's all this. I think I'm going to keep it chunky like this. Uh, it's going to contrast well with their shoe. When I model their shoe, I can make it very boring. And then for her, we can give like some chunky white shoes. I think that's going to be pretty cool. Um, save it. Let's give her some braces, some bracelets. Like, for those of you who have been following me, you know that I'm not super good with colors. So I'm like, I keep thinking I'm using too much, but that's the intention, right? I got to remember, that's the idea, is to make her contrast a lot. So even with the dress, I don't think I showed you all this, but there's an awesome button here in Zebra. If you go to Polypaint, there is a button called uh, Adjust Colors. And in this, you can you kind of have like some control of how to adjust some of the colors here. So what I'm going to do is push the saturation a bit more to bring more life to it. Oh, look at that. And we can change the intensity. We can do whatever. But for now, I'm just going to bring the saturation up. Yes, it's more vivid now. Before it was a bit subdued. He is definitely contrasting from him. Okay. Maybe also on this little things here, you could put, make the balls be like a very bright red. Or maybe a blue. No, that's too pink. No, pink is cool. Nice trick, right? Let's see what. Uh, yeah, we we might want to put a belt, some sorts of belt. Let's think about this. Let's see, one cool thing is that if we put a belt. We might be able to like do something like this. Check it out. We can do a little bunching, you know, of the, cro the cloth. And then let's say we put the belt here. And then it's going to come out maybe a little more organic, like a dress like this. That might be cool, right? Yeah, let's try the belt. I like the idea. I don't know what kind of belt. I think it might be just a little... A stringy thingy. Let's check it out. I'm going to duplicate the stress just so we have a backup if we do something wrong. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to imagine where I think the belt is going to be a high belt. It's going to be funny, cute and funny. So what I'm going to do, is, let's say up here, I'm going to take a scale, edge loop, and I'm going to scale this in like so. See? Hey, Prashan, how's it going? What are you doing, my friend? So we can using scale with the edge loop. Why are you doing? Um, using scale with the edge loop, we can kind of do a little bit of that shaping already, which is nice. See, so we can do something like this for the. You put the belt here, the string. I think you push it too far. I'm gonna push this one more, this one. Come on. This, this, something like that. And then let's do a little, little belt thingy. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna take a strip of polys from, from this thing. Oh, we can use a torus, let's do the torus. So that's kind of like what we did, then we can obviously push it more. But for now, I'm gonna push this down a bit more. This. And then we can get a Taurus. It's gonna be what? Red. Pend, get a Taurus. Here we go. I'm gonna put the nice red color. Hey, thank you, man. Glad to hear that you're doing well. We're trying to finish this gal here. And let's see. Something like this. Oops. Wait a bit. Yeah, I like that. It kind of breaks the the boring, uh, you know, straight thinking going on from the other kids. So we can kind of like do a little more that here. Can you please tell what maps did you use bake for Tetri Innocent Archetype? I'm a little lost what to do next after my spoke. Uh, yeah, when uh, we start texturing this one, um, I can show it some stuff. But what I do is I, I take to a uh, substance painter, right? And then I add the regular bakes map, bake maps, you know, like I don't do anything crazy. I just put the regular ones like a yo and the things that normally comes one already but then i can show you all next time um some stuff that i do to get more shaping on the model and that's a trick that i learned when i was uh doing working in games it's like you use some maps to fake shaping like fake lighting on the texture very little not a lot but you fake enough on the texture that it's going to give some life to it, you know? Again, you got to be very subtle with it, but it definitely helps to shape your models and they're going to look richer, you know? At least that's my experience so far with it. So, yes, I can show some, some tricks for sure on Substance Painter. You can do those same tricks in Photoshop if you don't use Substance Painter. You can do it in Marmoset if you use Marmoset to, to do stuff. Anyways, um, I'm going to do a little bit of folds here because where where is compression? This is compression area, right? So you need fold. So I'm going to do some. Let's do a big first. So I always like to start with the big first. And then we do some small details like this. Just blocking some ideas here, and then we can see what's going to happen.
tend to be very um, careful with bold, I would say. I like the I like the idea of less is more with folds. So that's why you see me going like slow. I don't just like bam start doing some crazy folds. Um, that's just my way. It's not something I am very comfortable doing. So I gotta build from you know slowly. Let's see when you go. Okay, so doing some compression folds here. We could break a bit more. Again, if I turn off the painting, you can kind of see better. So sometimes because we have such a chaotic painting, it's easier to turn it off sometimes to, to do some decisions on the folds. The thing about fold that is that the compression area, which is this, right? It's where the folds are tighter and deeper. So compression area, you make them tighter and deeper and the more it spread, the softer it gets. This is something very important. So you can see that I have tighter here and then the more it goes, it's for soft. That is a very important thing about folds. So what I'm doing here is that I'm making it deeper on the top, and then as it goes down, it spreads more and it gets softer, okay? Uh, that's something that took me a while to learn. But then when I did learn, I was like, all right, let's do this, you know? So I'm gonna make one fold, one big fold here. I'm just slowly building form here. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Then you can come here again. I can map some ideas. So let's say like this one is gonna come out. So right here, I'm gonna have this going in. So deeper on the top and sharper. And then you make the brush a little bigger and then make us more spread and less intense on the bottom. This one's gonna be a big one, like this. Oh, Hannah, I also be easy. <laughs> this stream is in English, but I, I am from Brazil. Um, was born in Recife, for those of you from Brazil, you might know. Um, but this stream is as in English. O brasileiro é do Nordeste, from Recife, northeast of Brazil, northeast area. I've been here for eleven years now in the U.S. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting when I have to go back to Brazil, you know, cause it's like, you feel like it was your home as you grow up, but it doesn't feel like home anymore, you know? I mean, and then here, I didn't grow up here, but my home is here, right? My everyday home. So it's kind of this weird feeling that you feel that you don't know where home is and where it feels good. I guess home for me also, it's not so much where I'm from, but my family and stuff, right? So I don't have my family here. It's just me and my husband. And my husband is American. So that's my family here, right, in the US. Then when I go home to Brazil, that's my family there, so it feels feels like home because of them. I don't know what I'm saying, but you guys get what I'm saying. It's a weird feeling like you don't have a much roots anymore. I don't know how to explain it. This has been so long since I've been here. 
Valeu, Renar. Renar. Valeu, valeu, valeu. So, I'm just kind of like blocking some stuff here. Yeah, you know it, Alina. It's the same situation, like you've been too long out of your, your, your own country, you know, so it doesn't feel so much like home anymore. But then here is also kind of weird because my family's not here. I mean, my husband is part of my family, but like my family that I grew up with, like my sister and mom and, and you know, my brother and stuff. So it's kind of interesting, <laughs> interesting thing. We can, you see how like right now, this is very right, perfect round. One thing that's gonna help is if we, we give some zigzag feeling to it. So for example, push this out a bit more and then this in. Again, like you gotta think about how clothing is so organic. So we gotta really give the life to it, you know? Or else it just feels too stiff and weird. So I did some zigzag here. We got to be careful not to break too much things. Yeah, home is where your loved ones are for sure. <laughs> Good, I'll have my whole family here. They have their whole life too, right? I want to take them from their life. Same way I wouldn't want them to want me to go back because they miss me, right? So it's got to accept life is fluid and we got to go with the flow. People do what's best for them. Okay, um, thank you for sharing your feelings about home. Yeah, I wanted to ask this today. Have have to live in another country now. I'm thinking what to do next. You work remotely now in that Blizzard and Netflix. Um, I do work remote. Uh, well, I work for Disney, right? And then uh, some Disney, some of us still working remote. I don't know for how long, but for now, I, I did choose to stay remote. I don't think this is going to be something that's going to be forever. Like, I think at some point, we all going to have to go back. But there are some companies like Netflix, for example, that they do have people that can work remote forever, right? Um, so that is an option if you, like, don't want to leave your country or your family or whatever. Uh, you can always look for companies that hire people remote, and then you can stay remote, which is nice. Um, my case, I came 11 years ago and there are not much companies doing remote stuff. So my option, if I wanted to get to the industry was to have to come here, right? So I did work in person at Blizzard. I did work in person at Netflix. That was before COVID, right? But now a lot of things are changing. So who knows? We might see some some companies, um, you know, being more open about people working remote or not. I don't know, you know, it depends. It depends on the style of the company. It depends on a lot of it also is like, oh, how much money can we save? Maybe we should keep remote, right? Some companies think that way. Some companies, they're more like, no, we got to keep the culture inside, everyone together. So it's hard to tell uh, how it's going to be. I've been seeing some companies being very open about keeping things remote. I've been seeing some like very against. So, yeah. 
right, let's turn on the color back so we can see see how it feels. It's pretty cool. Um, yes, COVID changed a bit things, but I suspect the industry would love to return back to the classical workflow with people in presence to yell and scream to. Oh, um, yeah, that could be it. <laughs> I think some companies are definitely like, uh, I, I noticed like some medium to small size companies, they really notice that it's, it's better to have your artists working from home. You save a lot of money not having to have a space to pay lights, to pay a bunch of internet, a bunch of computers on the whole time. So I noticed some medium to small companies being very, um, proactive about keeping things remote, which is kind of nice. The big company, though, um, I've been seeing they're being more conservative, you know, about that stuff, so. You also do the model texturing and hair grooming part or just the raw part in the modeling. I love your work. And I'm from Brazil, and I have your two portions. Yay! <laughs> um, it depends. Like, when I'm doing for my own personal project, I like to do everything. But when I'm working at uh, as a modeler, I only do the models. So I don't do hair. I don't do anything. So, like, at my, my day job, yes, I only model. Um, sometimes I do some poly paint because it helps for directors to visualize things. Not sometimes, I always do poly paint. That helps directors a lot to visualize. But we do not do anything crazy like hair sim or um, next gen, anything like that. That's a whole department. We have a whole department to do that for us, right? So. Yeah, nice to meet you. No place, Gus. <laughs> Alina, we have a big team in Spain working with us here in LA. I love the remote work idea, but it's nice to be in the office once in a while. Yes, I agree. If I had to choose, like, go full on back or stay remote, I'll probably stay remote if I could choose. But if I could choose hybrid, like sometimes go to the office, sometimes and most of the time stay at home, that will be ideal for me because I do miss going to the office sometimes and like go around, see how people are doing on the desks and like having lunch and all the fun stuff. I do miss that too. I'm not going to lie. So sometimes, yeah, it can be very lonely to be at home all the time. I'm so lonely. <laughs> but at least on Sunday, I have you guys here and we can chat and we can work together. And I'm always looking looking forward to the Sundays because it's kind of like my chance to chat with friends and, you know, sculpt and talk shit. So thank you for being here. <laughs> Speaking of, what, are your full, what is your full rig? Make us blush revealing your PC specs at home. Uh, what? How do I see it again? Some of cool, they're fun. I love it. I love being here with you guys. How do I see my computer specs again? I go to the start menu, right? And then I do setting, is it? No. System, system. I think that's what it is, right? So this is my stuff. So, and I, I don't understand much computer. I just my husband's the one who puts my computer together for me. Uh, so I have 64 RAM, AMD, pro, 16 core processor, and my graphics card is is uh, Nvidia something. <laughs> is that helpful? <laughs> I don't know. Um. Maybe here on the front, she could have like a little bow tie. What do you guys think we should do for the tie? Should it be just like, I think now I should, now that I'm looking at how thin I made this, I'm gonna make this stuff thinner as well. And if you don't know this trick, here's the trick. 
uh, yeah, I need video something. You hold control and you click on this yellow square in here. It's going to inflate or deflate your model. This is so important, guys, because everything we want to do a little nudge of something, you hold control, just do a little bit, boom, it's thinner now. Okay. Uh, any video something? <laughs> Yes, I do have to do a retouple. Uh, no play, guys. Where are the qualifications we need to fulfill, uh, to fulfill for join a company in the US work remotely? Um, to work remotely, I think you just, I think, I mean, most companies for a big company, right? If you're thinking about smaller company, they might hire you for your personal portfolio. And that's going to be great. For bigger companies, you might need to have a more professional portfolio in conjunction with your uh, personal portfolio, you know. Uh, but it's just to have a strong portfolio, man. Have a strong portfolio. Have a uh, personal work. Show your passion. Recruiters are always in love with people that show their passion. Show that they do stuff on their free time. That they're storytellers. Again, this is my experience, but because I like to tell my own stories, people really connect with my portfolio. You know, when I apply, it's like, oh, the story you made and things like that. So if you don't feel comfortable doing your own concept, find good stories that from other people did the concept, but find good stories that people made and model those stories little bit of yourself to it you know like on the live or on you know, whatever it is but storytelling in my opinion is one of the big things people uh don't pay attention to when they're making their portfolio and this is something that connects is how you connect with people you know what i mean um thank you for the streams and make my sundays happier and also informative oh my god yeah Thank you for being here. You're awesome. You always give me great ideas. I appreciate you all giving ideas because having to do it all by myself is very boring. <laughs> and you guys have great ideas. So thank you. Uh, how many years did you work until you reached to Disney? Oh, so many. Uh, I started working. My, I was 16. I was doing some architect work for physical maquettes. Um, so I started pretty early in my life to work. Uh, not with 3D, but working in general, right? Getting to that working mindset. And then, um, let's say, I came to the U.S. about 11 years ago, right? And I came to the U.S. thinking I want to work at Disney. And I got to Disney about two and a half years ago. So it took me like, do the math. I'm very bad now, but what, seven years at least? Seven, six, seven years, six years and a half, I don't know. But it took me all that much going around to, I worked at Blizzard, which was amazing. I worked at um, DreamWorks, which was amazing, and Netflix. So, all those places I learned so much to get where I am, right? So that's kind of the gist for me. Uh, but yeah, it took me a, a little while, you know. I know some people at Disney that straight out of school, they took to Disney. Isn't that amazing? <sighs> but not me. <laughs> And I don't re have regrets, to be honest. Like, I, I think I mentioned this before, but I think, like, in the beginning of my career, I was pretty insecure. And I think, like, having other places to develop my my way of being and, uh, you know, learning how to be more secure, to trust my guts and things like that, put me in a place where when I got to Disney, I was like, all right. Let's do this, you know? I was, like, not scared anymore. I mean, I'm always scared. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm very scared of life and things. But I was much more um, 
comfortable with the idea of living my dream, you know, where uh, before I might had a little more imposter syndrome maybe, or, you know, that stuff. But when I got to Disney, I was already going through so many other studios that I was like, all right, let's make this happen, you know? Um, so in my opinion, I think I got here the right time uh, because I was feeling more secure. I was feeling more um, solid about my work in general. So, yeah. <laughs> Do you plan to launch any more courses? If yes, can we comment on what it is? Can you can you comment? With it be in English or Portuguese or subtitles? Yes, I am planning a few things. I want to continue my Gumroad projects. Uh, I had to take a pause, but I want to continue making more Gumroad videos. I am doing a class at some point this year with uh, the school in Brazil called Revolution. So I'm going to be doing a class with them some point this year. If you're interested, go to the website. It's going to be in Portuguese. Go to the website and uh, uh, subscribe to the waiting list. There's a waiting list for it. And in English, I can't say much, but there might be some good things for me in English as well. But I can't say much anymore. Uh, yeah, can't say much. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm breaking a little bit of that since she cut by hand, instead of everything being like aligned perfectly, you know, like going like this all perfect. What I'm doing is that I'm creating a little more like the diagonal almost, like she cut a bit wrong, you know. Uh, free runner said, Alpha Boy class comments. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Let's do that. Damn, for runners, you're giving all great ideas. I appreciate that. Um, are you using any plugins in ZBrush? I do not use any plugins. I do use some. Um, I like to make my own uh, UI. So you can see here, I press a key on my board and I have some of my favorite things. So I don't need to keep going here and click stuff all the time. So. Uh, I use this a lot to avoid having to come to the right menu. Uh, but I don't use any plugins, so like specific plugins in ZBrush. No. Yeah, I'll let you all know for sure when things are a bit more defined. Um, the Brazil class, is, is, it's, it's going to happen this year. I just need to, um, we're just figuring out if it's going to be like September, October, November, something like that. But yes, it will. The subtitle, please. I'll get over the next one. <laughs> you know, you know a funny thing, no play? I'm going to call you no play. Okay? Subtitles are so damn annoying to make. Oh my God, I thought it was going to be easy. It is not easy. You have to open the subtitles by hand because the automatic correction with our terms, the 3D terms we use and stuff, does not, it does a horrible job. So that class I did, I had to open every subtitle and go over everything and correct it by hand. And that was so painful. <sighs> it was horrible. So let's we'll see if I would do subtitles again. <laughs> I don't know, man. It was very painful. <laughs> All right. So let's do a few knots here for here in the front. We're gonna do very simple for now. So I'm just gonna duplicate this torus. I'm gonna make like a little small little thingy. So it's gonna be, again, control. And you click on this yellow thing, inflate things, right? Or the opposite as well. So I'm just gonna do a little loop so we can use here. 
put it, and then we can inflate to make like the thickness of the belt, something like that. And then we can start adding a little life to it, something like this. And then it doesn't need to be necessarily on the front. We can change that. Not like perfect in the middle. I think mine is too perfect in the middle. So we can move it to the side a bit more. Maybe like she did a tie here on the side more. This area maybe. That. You know when sometimes you have like a, a dream or a nightmare that it feels so vivid that your whole day you keep thinking about it? That was me last night. I had this vivid, weird nightmare and, and I keep thinking about it, but it's not real life, you know, but it feels so real. And you like, keep thinking. I don't like that. Anyways, so... Okay, something like that. And then we can put, um, again, I'm going to use the clay tube. And then we can do like some, whoops, oops, I'm on the dress. So we can do some little maybe things like this, smaller. Yeah. Those dreams that they don't go away, like you, you, you still keep the feeling just like so annoying. I don't like it. Yes. Yes. And obviously, you know, it's, it's too thick, but we can, oh, come on. We can just uh, take this too. And then we can deflate. Deflate a little like this. Okay, you see, if there's anything important to learn today is that I was not feeling today to work on this, right? But I pushed through it. And we got to a very decent place. I wouldn't say it's amazing yet, but it's pretty decent, right? So if anything for you guys is the only way through it is the only way to it is through it, you know? So we got you. The thing is that people always want to do things when I'm feeling it, when I'm feeling it. And that's just not how we do in production, right? You got to go through it. You got to do it. So this is so important, and I hope you guys remember that. Um, you got to put yourself through it, and it's going to happen. You just got to be persistent and consistent, okay? So this is a great example today, you know, of that. That, you know, I wasn't feeling at all working on this today, and I'm kind of having fun. I'm doing it, and we're getting results. You know? Anyway, I'm gonna stop my motivational speeches. But it's it's true though, it's true. That's why I keep saying uh oh my god, I had a weird yeah, I read it. My English isn't that good, but I will do my best if I have to watch it without subtitles. I really love the scope. And the 3D Enjoy courses, they are perfect. Oh, thank you. And the one from Revolution, I hope I can attend to the class too. I already watched some of your dear Rafael Souza. Yes, Rafael Souza. If you speak Portuguese and you're not watching his videos, you are missing out, friends. You're doing, you're not being smart. That's all I'm going to say. His classes, I have subscription to his classes. Um, it's you pay monthly and you it's kind of like a Netflix. You pay monthly and then you, you know he keeps adding videos because he does this for a living. 
he is a teacher, online teacher for a living. So he has stuff coming out all the time. So it's very good. Every time I want to remember, like, oh, I need some refresher on some arms anatomy or something. I go to his class. As I pay the subscription, I go there. Bam, bam, bam. I'm back on track with arms because he has amazing classes for anatomy stuff and such. So highly, highly recommend. And he's also an amazing teacher. Amazing. It's incredible, you know. A lot of the way I teach was inspired by him, to be honest, you know, because he was my teacher early on. And I admire him so much. He's so passionate. So a lot of the way I like to teach is, is because I learned the right way with him, you know. That's the importance of having good mentors in your career. They teach you so much. So, yeah, I can't stress enough how important. Uh, if you speak Portuguese, you should definitely be on his uh his subscription classes. All right, I think we're done with some of this stress stuff here. Push this down a bit. Um, okay. Practically the chat today is so live that it's comparable and having no flex money. <laughs> yes, it's true. When you, scoop the con when you scoop the concept, what the best way for output the final model with subdivisions or Dynamesh? I mean, for any changes, hope you understand. The best thing is always to make the topology yourself. But if you're doing an illustration like what I'm doing here, you know, I do zero measure. Zero measure. Uh, if you want to keep a lot of the details to render, you might want to use, um, what's the name of that thing? Decimation master. Yeah, you might want to use decimation. All right. We are almost on time. His kindness makes anyone have an amazing day. I know, right? He's so inspiring. He's so kind. And, and he really loves this shit, you know? He really loves teaching. And I learned how to love teaching with, with him and another guy called Philippe Utes. And he was my, my teacher when I was starting my career in 3D. And, um, you know, their passion rubbed on me and they're wanting to share content and and uh, inspire, you know. A lot of it I got from them, to be honest. And continue propagating, like, this passion and this kindness, and, you know. Anyway, so, yes, if you have a chance to check out his work, you should definitely, you, you should definitely do it. Unfortunately, most of his stuff is in Portuguese only. So some people in English, uh, I think his YouTube, some, there's some videos in English on his YouTube, but for his classes, I don't think he does anything in, in English. All right. What do you guys think? We got pretty far, right? We only need to do some bracelets, maybe bracelets, and then I need to model the shoe properly. And so uh, one important thing to say is that I'm going to be out for two weeks because I'm going on vacation. But fear not, the channel is not going to be dead. We're going to have two guests. And I don't know who's going to be the guest for next week. But the week after is going to be my one of my best friends, Caleb Rice. Let me get his uh, our station here. Kayla is going to take over for me. Uh, Kayla Rice. Why? Kayla Rice. Kayla, it's an amazing modeler. He works at Pixar. Okay. And he, I worked with him during my time at DreamWorks. We worked together. And he is just the sweetest, most inspiring man I ever met. And you're going to love seeing him doing stuff. He's also a 2D artist. Doesn't have here in his portfolio. But if we put here Caleb Rice uh, Light Year, you're going to see a lot of his 2D work that he did for both Light Year. Uh, for the new movie, he did this character. He did all the drawings. Um <clears throat> 
what else he did. Doesn't promote his work very much. But if we go to his Instagram, let's go to his Instagram here. Caleb Rice. I call him Caleb. So, because I think it's funny. But he designed this character. He also modeled this character for the movie. So he did the 2D and the 3D and the final model. He did the models for uh, the little robot, I forgot his name, Socks. Uh, he did, he actually modeled all these characters in the movie, all the main characters. He was the modeler, but this guy here, the tall guy, he designed it as well. Pixar, how crazy is this? Anyways, so he's going to be here to talk with you all, and it's going to be amazing. And so, but remember, the next two weeks are going to be out. And uh, Caleb's going to take over the week after. I don't know who, who no one's going to put to take over next week. They might just cancel. I don't know. I don't know at all. Okay. So I'm just assuming some stuff here that I might, I might be wrong. But um, I know Caleb's going to be here for sure on the September 4th stream. So don't miss out. I'm going to steal. If you follow me on Instagram. Let me do a little fun thing here. Here's my, here's my Instagram. If you don't know, you can follow me on Instagram. And I normally post on my stories, like going live. And then, you know, you can get a reminder by the stories that Caleb's going to be there. Cool. Um, Yes, so two weeks after, when I'm back, we're going to be doing some texturing and lighting on this piece and I'll hopefully be done. And then we can start a new archetype. And you guys, like last time, are going to help me choose which archetype we're going to do. We have, let's just take a look here. We have, um, where's the archetype list here? Here's the rebel one. Oh, here we go. So we're going to have the rebel done and the innocent. Wait, the innocent's done. Let me put here. Done. So we're going to have the rebel done. I'm going to put done for now. So we still have the explorer, the hero, the jester, every man and lover to do. So next, when I'm back, we're going to do some voting to see what's going to be the next one we're going to do. Cool. All right, I think that's it for today, guys. Thanks for bearing with me. Uh, this was very fun, and I think we got in a pretty decent place. And um, I'll see you all in two weeks. And I'm gonna take some vacation time. And that's that. Yeah, thank you for all the help in the chat. You guys are so fun to, to talk and interact, and, and you guys have great ideas, so. I much appreciate that. Thank you for your lessons about life also. Have a great vacation. Yes, this is my first two-week vacation in a long time. So I'm very excited. <laughs> all right. I'll see you all in two weeks. Bye, everyone. Now I'm going to put that nice um, Norman videos. And remember, drink lots of water. And try to study and work without much stuff going on. You're going to thank me if you do that. You're going to see you're going to progress faster. All right? And drink water, please, all the time. Bye, everyone.